Hello, my name is Travis Newbill. I live and work here at Shambhala Mountain Center, where we're going to be hosting a retreat from April 25th to April 27th, a Tai Chi retreat um, titled Flowing Like Water, Strong as a Mountain. And that retreat is going to be led by Larry Welsh, who has trained in the Yang style short form Tai Chi, uh, listening hands and sword uh, since 1977. Larry is a senior adjunct professor and mindfulness meditation teacher in the traditional Eastern Arts program at Naropa University. He practices Japanese classical acupuncture, herbal medicine, and whole food nutrition in Boulder, Colorado. And I'm really fortunate to have Larry here to have some discussion today. Thanks so much, Larry, for uh, taking the time and uh, joining here. Thank you, Travis. Good to be here. So in addition to you know, having a long-standing Tai Chi practice, uh, nearly 40 years now, I know that um, back in the late 70s, you also connected with Buddhist practice and uh, Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche as a teacher around Naropa. And so how did um, those two practices come about for you? And how has you know, your Buddhist practice and Tai Chi practice be evolved or complemented each other or not over the years? Yeah. Well, um, I think that's uh, what, what you just said is really um, the whole point is that uh, um, Tai Chi Chuan and uh, Buddhist city meditation practice um, really uh, informed each other um, as I practiced over the years. Um, tai Chi's teaching about um, in essence, um, it is about cultivating our basic life force, what uh, um, the, the Chinese refer to as qi. Um, but it's uh, uh, also a lot, uh, in essence, um, based on my teachers and uh, Professor Cheng Man Chang, who uh, brought the Yang style short form Tai Chi Chuan to New York City in the early 60s. Um, you know, he really emphasized the idea behind Tai Chi was to cultivate relaxation in body and mind. And uh, what uh, he taught, which was very simple but brilliant, um, was that when we practice authentic relaxation in body and mind, then we become less fearful. And as we become less and less fearful um, as human beings, um, then we become more and more relaxed. So it goes back and forth. And the relationship to Buddhist sitting meditation practice um, really is a practice of developing fearlessness towards oneself and others through the practice of gentleness. So both of these practices um, really uh, enriched uh, in a very powerful way each other. Um, in terms of my own learning process and uh, my own wakefulness and uh, maturity as a human being. So in um, Buddhist teachings, we were taught about meditation and post-meditation. Mm -hmm. you know, on the cushion and how that influences how we engage with our life off the cushion. Mm -hmm. How does that work in uh, Tai Chi? You know, there's formal practice where we're doing movements. I don't know Tai Chi, so I'm just winging, okay. <laughs> imitating what I see you doing in the picture. Yeah. Um, but I don't so often see people busting out Tai Chi moves, you know, in the middle of restaurants and whatever, where people might be doing mindfulness practices. Yes. So how does, how does you know, uh, what would you yeah. call Tai Chi in everyday life or something like that? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question, really. Um, uh, you know, in the Buddhist tradition, in terms of post-meditation practice, what we're really looking at um, in terms of a, you could say, a 24-hour practice um, where regular sitting meditation practice on the cushion and then post-meditation, over time, uh, the practice becomes internalized and it becomes seamless. So uh, it's the same thing in Tai Chi Chuan though we may have external movements that we do to cultivate relaxation and to open up the flow of chi in our body and our mind, um, 
it's exactly the same principles, really, um, that no matter what we're doing, whether we're brushing our hair or um, we're talking with friends or if we're eating, the idea um, in Tai Chi that we often uh, teach is that the uh, heart-mind always stays in the lower belly, in the, what's called the uh, Sea of Chi. Mm -hmm. And um, that place is like a resting place for um, our heart-mind to rest um, and uh, to be, uh, you could say, tethered there um, in a very gentle way. And so when we rest our heart-mind in the Sea of Chi, in our lower abdomen, which is very common in many of the Eastern traditions in Japan and Korea and China, Vietnam, this idea that our consciousness or our awareness or our heart-mind stays in our belly. And, and by doing such a practice, um, then we can actually bring that to any moment of life in any circumstance. Um, we often talk about this idea uh, of uh, staying home, that our heart-mind, our awareness is always at home, no matter what the circumstances. And that's very similar to um, post-meditation practice and the Buddhist tradition, which is uh, that we sustain mindfulness and we sustain actually resting our mind, even within activity. Um, so uh, they have a lot in common in that way. Um, but in, of course, Tai Chi, it's not so much about doing the postures when you're in the restaurant. But, um, for example, um, when we're in the restaurant and we're sitting uh, in a booth, um, we have our feet uh, unified with the ground. And we place our heart, mind, and our dantian as we talk with our friends and uh, eat our meal. Mm. So that's uh, one example of the post-meditation practice of Tai Chi. And I wonder, you know, it says that you mm, you you teach uh, uh, whole food nutrition. Yeah. So I suppose that the, the Tai Chi practice or the Tai Chi awareness would kick in when we're looking at the menu also, maybe. Oh, definitely. Um, not only in terms of uh, a gentle, upright posture and feet unified with the ground. Um, I don't know if it really, uh, Tai Chi in of itself, I think the basic idea that you comes across um, is not so much about um, the particular food, but it's about balance. Mm -hmm. So that um, balance in the sense of that we, we eat uh, from a broad range of foods and that we don't uh, eat excessively where we overeat, which will disrupt the chi uh, in our stomach, our stomach chi, and it can actually cause health problems like, you know, what we call uh, rebellious chi. You know, sometimes people um, actually experience uh, nowadays um, what's called uh, uh, GERD, uh, which is uh, uh, acid reflux into the esophagus. And a lot of time that happens not just uh, simply from the kinds of food that we're overindulging in, if we eat too many fatty foods or if we eat too much dairy. So it's the, the emphasis is on too much uh, of one thing. Um, but it also has to do if we eat our meals in a stressful state of mind, if we're constantly pressured, if we're eating on the go, and we don't actually have time uh, to really be relaxed um, while we eat our meals. Um, we know uh, in real basic, uh, in a basic sense, we know that optimal digestion occurs when we're relaxed and poor digestion occurs when we're pressured and we feel tense. Hmm. So there's the attitude of how we eat. Do we eat um, with our mind relaxed in our lower abdomen, resting there, relaxed and spacious? Um, and then there's uh, the specifics of do we overeat uh, certain kinds of food 
that overwhelm our digestive system, then that starts to cause problems in terms of whole food nutrition. I can, uh, you know, I can see that extending out to the things beyond food that we can see consume, like um, in media or even, you know, interpersonal sorts of things. Like if we're not in the right state of mind, that could affect chi negatively, or you know, the same thing could potentially uh, injure. Exactly. No, that's that's uh, that's exactly right. So um, the idea is that our practice, though it's a very gentle, very gentle practice, um, in the sense that it's it's not um, a rigid sort of feeling when we work with our body and our mind through Tai Chi or in sitting meditation practice. It doesn't have a quality of rigidness or um, uh, being overly strict with ourselves, but it's more the attitude of relaxation, um, like you said. So um, we begin to uh, recognize um, that we can uh, let go of uh, harmful thoughts. We can let go of a stressful thinking. We can let go of anxiety through very, very specific teaching and practices. And when we learn how to do that in a very gradual way, we begin to integrate uh, that kind of relaxation in body and mind um, through all moments of life. We realize there's actually a choice, and we are empowered as human beings through understanding uh, the teachings and the practices of Tai Chi and mindfulness practice, etc., uh, we can actually implement and embody those practices and make a choice in how we live in each moment. I'm feeling more relaxed just uh, just talking with you, Larry, than I was before. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'm feeling more relaxed talking with you, Travis. Oh, well, maybe you're hearing yourself. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, it's also it's also about you know the connection between you know when two people connect you know there's just that you know the presence of uh, two people connecting that begins to uh, through dialogue and uh, seeing each other uh, it affects our chi. And it's so funny that even it can, it can even happen uh, digitally. Yeah. Our little, our little the chi is traveling through the pixels or something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's no obstacles. <laughs> so folks will, uh, as I mentioned, have the opportunity to um, to get much deeper into this in this uh, this weekend that you're going to be leading. Yes. From April 25th to 27th. I wonder if there's anything you know else that you'd like to say or comment on you know about the the retreat itself. Well, I think. Um, The idea is that we'll, we'll be working very closely with movement and stillness and how that uh, affects our health and how that can empower each human being to contact their intrinsic health and their well-being. We'll learn how to work with our basic aliveness, our basic energy or our chi. Uh, chi is often translated as breaths, so we'll be working with movement and breaths throughout the program. Um, and then uh, we will be working with uh, periods of sitting meditation and uh, learning about the lion's roar of fearlessness through the four foundations of mindfulness practices. And then um, Finally, we'll also be really looking at uh, the fact that we're embedded in this world. And uh, what I mean by embedded is that we uh, are influenced and affected by the five seasons and uh, the five elements. And we'll uh, be really doing uh, very personal and experiential inquiry into the movement of the five elements and the five seasons 
as they're reflected in the practice of Tai Chi and as they're reflected in uh, allowing us to balance our whole uh, life flow through each day uh, of the year and through each season. So um, that's something that uh, uh, I've worked with for a long, long time. But the, uh, the wisdom of the five elements and the five seasonal movements, uh, which are an inherent part of Tai Chi Chuan and the Chinese tradition, uh, will be brought into the retreat as well um, in a way that people, it's very hands-on, uh, that people can really uh, take home with them and integrate into how they create balance in their everyday life throughout the seasons. Sounds awesome. We'll sort of be uh, looking forward to hosting you and everyone else who comes up to, uh, to participate. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I always enjoy being up at Shambhala Mountain Center. Um, I stayed at Shambhala Mountain Center, you know, many, many moons ago. Um, did my first retreat up there uh, for about five, six months uh, um, in 1979. And uh, I have a real love and appreciation for uh, Shambhala Mountain Center. Mm. Well, and likewise, it'll be great having you up here. All right, Travis. So, Good, great to talk with you, and uh, uh, thanks for uh, uh, interviewing me today and creating this uh, uh, Google Hangout today. Yeah, well, thank you for co-creating. It's been a joy, and uh, thank you to everybody who's watching this or listening to this. And All right. More, uh, more conversations with uh, wonderful teachers ahead, so stay tuned. All yeah. right. Uh, Larry, don't don't hang up on your end. I'm going to click the button and then we can uh, say bye. Okay. But officially on air, bye now. All right. Thank you.